Be there, John Opinion Sports. All right, I've already put out my two favorite wide receivers for each round and edge rushers. Now it's time for the offensive line. Now, I haven't focused on every prospect in the draft. I've been more focused in on like a few different position groups. Obviously, the biggest needs and O line is a big need. But we got Hernandez, who's been consistent at best and playing on his last year of his contract. Shane Lemieux, who's you know played well at times last year but struggled to pass protect. No, I'm not sold on either at this point. I have hope for Lemieux, but you know we just don't know how he'll progress yet. So I'm going to focus on interior offensive line for this video. I'm going to choose two possible players for each round, and I'm going to try and keep the players you know right around where I think they'll be drafted. So I'll keep it as realistic as possible. So for the first round, I'm going to choose Rayshon Slater and Elijah Vera Tucker. I debated whether to put Slater, you know, on here because there's a chance he's going to be off the board by 11. But ultimately, I had to make a decision, and I think that there's a chance he's there to live. Rayshon Slater is not what you'd call like a hog molly. Even though he's on the smaller side, he's still very compact. You know, he's more muscular than your average lineman. A bonus is he's had plenty of experience in college. He's a three-year starter. You know, he faced off against some high-end talent you know, in his time in college and held his own. It's well known how he like, basically dominated Chase Young. Uh, his like, lateral movement is top-notch. You know, he'd be great at pulling if he you know, makes the move to guard. And that's where I'd ultimately like to see him go. You know, he's great at getting to the second level, you know, putting a hat on you know, linebackers, you know, faster defensive players and pass it he's not gonna lunge and lean a bunch you know, and this dude's punch is legit so when he gets his punch it works to say the least honestly Slater you you know you're not gonna see him get beat on the inside and maybe the thing that popped out the most to me was like his balance and recovery it's top notch for real you know, good luck to anyone trying to bull rush him <laughs> now the negatives there ain't many the only things I've seen that could be minor issues is you know at times his punch it's his hand placement needs to be worked on. You know, his arm length could be an issue, but you know, I think a move to guard would mitigate a lot of that. You know, he's he's got to work more on short yardage plays. You know, he can he can not get low enough at times. But that's about it. I mean, they're, they're all you know all coachable issues that he has. He's a great prospect. You know, and if he's the Giants pick at eleven, it would be hard you know like take a smile off my face. Now, Elijah Vera Tucker. First thing that pops is the strength. You know, he'll put people in the dirt. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's athletic enough, you know, full time for tackle. So I view him as a guard. Uh, Blake Slater, he's he's pretty good in the second level. Um, as a great anchor. You know, again, good luck bull rushing him as well. He's got good balance and recovery. You know, he's he's very similar to, to Will Hernandez in the run game. Uh, very comparable. They're almost identical, actually. Uh, now. I think Vera Tucker has more upside than Hernandez in his past sets, you know, but he still needs some work. He can lose position at times, needs to refine his hands and feet, and he needs to improve on down blocking as well. But he's a good prospect. You know, Vera Tucker might be a bit of a reach at 11, but if the Giants trade back, go for it. Tucker has moved all around, you know, in college, so I'm comfortable with him starting at either guard spot. All right, second round, I chose Alex Leatherwood and Creed Humphrey. I know from interviews that Leatherwood really wants to make a go, you know, at a left tackle. But that, you know, it just might not be in the cards for him. You know, he's got all the measurables, but I worry about his athleticism. And we all know the lesser athletes get kicked in the guard. I mean, it's just how it is in the NFL. So Leatherwood has a tackle, I'm a no-go at guard, I'm taking a shot. He did play a season at right guard in Alabama, so he has the experience. That's a bonus. You know, this is just a weird spot, and Alex would be a weird pick if he falls to pick 42. But I can see Gettleman taking a shot. You know, he's a hog molly and a team captain, so he's a Gettleman type of guy. I think brother would develop into a monster. Uh, he just needs to add some speed to his game, you know, some mechanics. This dude will throw people around. Should be fun to watch. Now, Creed Humphrey, you know, he feels like a gentleman guy as well. He's a two-year team captain. From all reports, he's a team leader. And he's tough as nails. You know, he's a bit undersized. So I'd like to see him bulk up some. That you know, that normally happens naturally in the NFL. You know, he's 305 at the moment. I'd like to see him get up to like 315, 320. He plays center in Oklahoma, but I think he can make the move to guard. You know, if he finishes his blocks, and I, and I like his trap game. Uh, for his size, he's a strong guy. His hands are good. 
you know, he's a center, so he obviously is good at working with a lineman next to him. You know, he can make linemen next to him look better than they really are. That has value. Now, he's not a bulldozer, but he holds his own for a size. You know, he can pull a little bit. He's got shorter arms, so he can, you know, he can, be, he can get got, you know, by a longer and tier defensive lineman. Like, he wouldn't do well against a Leonard Williams type of player. Um, Humphreys isn't you know, good as the first three against the bull rush, but that'll improve, uh, especially with adding some bulk. You know, I, I like him. You know, he's not a, he's not a perfect prospect, but I like his upside. You know, he's the kind of player that could take a huge leap from the first year to the second. Round three, I chose Landon Dickerson. Deontay Brown. Now, Landon Dickerson could very well be off the board by 76, but I think the injuries will make him drop. I'd be comfortable taking Dickerson in the second, but we might not have to. I think he could play at any position inside. This dude, though, is an animal. You know, he's gonna get in the mix, try to bully defensive linemen. This tape is fun to watch, man, I'm telling you. I think the kid is smart. You know, he's great at getting off the block and making contact with the second defender. He just, he works. I think he could develop into like a special center guard. His injury history is tough though. You know, he tore his ACL in December. So I think it's gonna be a while before he gets on the field. But his only weakness is shorter arms like most of these guys. So he's gonna struggle with longer armed, you know, players. Kind of, just kind of like Creed Humphreys I talked about before. Yeah. On to Lena's teammate, Deontay Brown. And this dude is a bear. <laughs> True blue hog molly, you could say. I mean, this dude probably goes 350 plus. Uh, I'm not sure if he's a scheme fit, but I had to get some hog mollies in here. <laughs> I had to do it. Uh, this dude isn't fat at all, though. I mean, he is just muscle muscles popping out of his neck. He has a little, a little bit of athleticism for his size, I'd say. 2019, when they played Auburn, he wrecked Derrick Brown. <laughs> so, um, you know, he's going to move bodies in the run game. And he, hold, he just he holds his own in pass plays as well. He's going to struggle some blocking laterally. You know, his, his movement left or right isn't great. You know, he's a little slow on pull plays, you know, he can launch at times, but all his rounds are coachable, I think. You know, obviously players' arms ain't growing longer, <laughs> so you can't fix that. But you can use fundamentals to counter some of that, you know. Deontay would probably benefit from just sitting a season, uh, maybe half a season, just get some coaching. You know, people will seem to think he'll be best in like a power run offense. Whatever team is gonna, you know, run power from time to time. All right, fourth round, I chose Aaron Banks and Bryce Hargrove. Let's talk about Aaron Banks a little. First though, the Giants come out week one trying to run outside zone. We saw how that ended in Pittsburgh. Uh, we just don't got the players to run outside zone. Now, when the team started running the power, you know, power running scheme, it started to click and a running game, you know, got going. I know they want to run the zone, but don't mess with a good thing. So if they stay with the same run scheme, I draft Aaron Banks. I think he could start right off the bat. If they're gonna come out and run, try and run zone again, stay away from Banks. But this dude is a beast. You know, he's big, powerful, and he's gonna move people. Uh, he's a hog molly, he's 340 pounds. He's not a perfect prospect. Almost none of these guys are, but obviously he's not a perfect prospect. And obviously being a fourth round pick, you know, he's gonna have problems, he's got balance issues. And he won't be the best puller. But I think if he slims down some, he can be a solid starter at the guard position. I wouldn't expect Pro Bowl, you know, Pro Bowls, but he could be Will Hernandez. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, not bad for the fourth round. Now, Bryce Hargrove. I like this kid. And living in Pennsylvania, I got to see a good bit of him. This kid is a mauler, man. <laughs> you know, he just wants to hit someone. He reminds me of Shane Lemieux. But here's the difference. He can actually pass block. <laughs> Now, he's aggressive in the run game, but he needs to improve. He could be a little, he, you know, he can get a little overexcited and lunge and lose control at times. I like his pass blocking technique, but I'd like for him to sit and work on his run blocking technique, all that for a while. The Shane, you know, the Shane Lemieux route would probably be the best for him. Let him sit out the year, develop, you know, and start to work him in. At the moment, I'd be comfortable, you know, bringing in Bryce to replace Hernandez after the season. He's going to be a good player, and I think he could be developed to run really any kind of scheme you want. So, there's no fifth round pick this year, and I'm not going to do two players in the sixth round because I don't want the video to be 14 to 15 minutes long. You know, I like all these guys, 
but I'd prefer get them and you know grab a guard in the first two rounds. You know, guarantee yourself a starting guard. Now, these other guys could do it, but I'd prefer for them to be able to come in, sit, learn, you know, work on their bodies. You know, Giants got to get a future guard in this draft, uh, no doubt. We can be paying Hernandez big money after this season. Landon Dickerson might be the best route, you know, give him the year to heal up. You know, when it's time for him to, to start, he could be a very special player. If he didn't have the torn ACL, I have no doubt he'd be a first rounder. But it's been a long time since, you know, we've had a guard with his talent and nastiness. Um, probably not since Chris Snee. So thank you all for watching. Especially if you made it to this point, I owe you all everything. Uh, first, go Giants. Wreck this draft. And uh, thank you again. Stay safe, like, and subscribe.